Today's tutorial is all about creating a fan piece inspired by one of my favorite childhood movies, Jurassic Park. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial here at Blended Graphics. I'm Jason Ortega and as mentioned at the beginning of this video, today's episode is all about creating a fan piece inspired by the Jurassic Park films. This was a fun picture to create and well I think you guys are going to like it. So like the majority of my Photoshop tutorials, you're going to learn a lot about how you can blend images with one another as well as their background, learn a little bit about highlights and shadows, as well as adding all these fine little details to elevate your composite. I've truly enjoyed the support from everyone so far in this account, and if you're watching this for the first time or new to the channel and you like the material, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as click that bell to stay notified for any future videos. Um, I do have a lot more stuff in store for you and I think you're going to like it. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and stop talking about this introduction and we're going to move right into our image. Alright, so let's go ahead and load up our main image here, and this is going to be one of our main focal points, which is the Jeep. And if you press shift and click on that layer mask there, we can load up the original image, but you can see it's already been cut out just to save us some time. So we're going to scale this up a little bit and move it to the side, and we'll shift and click on that layer mask again. And we're going to go into one of our background layers, and we're going to press command J just to make a duplicate copy, so we always have one for backup. Bring that up to the top, and let's go ahead and turn that on. So we're going to press Command T. Let's scale this up quite a bit here. And we're just going to place this somewhere here at the bottom. OK, and obviously, since we did that, now we need to make adjustments to this Jeep. And we can even turn on that original image just so we can see how the ground in that kind of matches the ground with our background layer and try to get it pretty similar. And this is all about personal preference of where you want to place these items. And I went ahead and lowered the opacity on that because that image is mainly going to act as a template for us. So right now what we're bringing in is a new ground layer. And we're going to command T again just to scale this up a little bit. And we're going to put this at the bottom. OK, so now that we pretty much have that in place, let's use a marquee selection tool, create a selection of this top part, fill that layer mask with black, and then either control or command click on this anchor point here to drop down that perspective a little bit. And now that we have in place, we're just going to clean up this edge. All right, let's continue to build up this scene in our environment. So we're going to load in a grass image that we're going to put on top of this dirt. And let's scale this up a little bit. And we're just going to kind of place it somewhere that works for us right now. And we're going to repeat the same steps of using our marquee selection tool just to get rid of that top part. Erase some of this grass here. But this horizon line is a little bit off for us, so we're actually going to move this down a little bit so it makes more realistic sense. And same thing, let's just touch up that edge. All right, let's keep pushing, guys. We're going to bring in our original background image that we had, which was our first image. And with this, I want to use kind of the more of the foliage that's in this picture here. So we're just going to place it right about here. And let's add a layer mask and delete a lot of this ground. And so we can kind of blend what we already got going on for our ground as well as with this image. So this is looking pretty good. And next I want to use the lasso tool. And we're just going to create a selection of some of these palm trees as well as some of these bushes. It's going to be a really rough selection. It does not have to be perfect because we are going to clean this up a little bit later. So don't be worried if you have some of this. Um, background sky involved here. And we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Again, just a rough selection. Don't worry about getting some of the sky. We're going to clean that up. Alright, let's go ahead and erase this top part of the image here that didn't get selected. And now this template has served its purpose, so we're going to shut that off. And at this point, we're just going to build up more of that environment by adding more palm trees and some of that to our background. So I told you before, it doesn't really matter if we have that rough selection when we cut out that original background image because we're adding these palm trees to help continue to build up that foliage. And further along in the video, when we actually clean this up a little bit better, um, you'll see how these palm trees are going to help us out in that aspect. All right, and I'm using a hard round brush tip just because I'm going to erase this right tree here. 
And then from this point on, uh, we're just going to do the same thing that we've been doing, add more trees in, build up that background. So yeah, I'm just going to speed through this. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so this is actually looking pretty cool. Uh, what we want to do now is go to that first background image that we cut out the sky, and we're just gonna double click on that layer so we can go into our layer styles here, and we're gonna go down to the blend if and just remove some of these highlights so that way it just gets rid of that harsh orange color. So somewhere right around here should work just fine for us. And now I think we're at the point where we can bring in the sky, and introduce a little bit of that mood that we're trying to set here. So obviously we want to scale this up and let's just kind of get this into a good spot. And then next we actually want to double click on that layers thumbnail so we can get into the original image, use our spot healing brush tool so we can get rid of this moon. We're going to bring in our own. So let's just go ahead and take care of this. File, save, jump back into our original composition. And now you can see that we easily took care of that. So let's go ahead and bring in our moon that we're going to use for this project. We're going to alt and click on that layer so we can isolate it by itself. Use the select subject feature and then click on the layer mask. Alt or option click on that again to bring back the layers. And let's just put this somewhere off into this top left corner of the picture here. And just as a personal preference, um, I decided to go with this larger moon because I think it adds more character than that small one. Plus, it adds a bit more flexibility with interaction with our other objects. Okay, so it is time to bring in our first dino. And this one's actually going to go on top of our Jeep here. So let's place this somewhere up here, scale it down a little bit. I want to make sure that his both of his feet actually are on top of the hood of the Jeep. So I'm just going to tweak this a little bit more. I uh, kind of like where it's at right now. And now what we're going to do is add in our second dinosaur. This one's going to go behind our Jeep. And I want to make sure that the scale of the dinosaur is the same. I want them to match, obviously, so that it's very cohesive. And we're just going to place this guy somewhere right around here. I think this will look good. And now we're going to bring in some mountains. This is going to help us build up that background. We're going to use a quick selection tool to erase this sky. Okay, and we're going to put this somewhere off here to the left. And adding these cliffs, it, you know, it just provides more emphasis that we are in a very tropical landscape. And so just for the sake of consistency and keeping things very cohesive, as well as just making it easier on our end, um, I've added copies of the same image that we're just going to continue to use on top of each other and, you know, kind of create a little bit of height. So there's no, you know, perfect way of execution for this. Just have fun with this and just try to build up this environment in the back and make it look interesting and just provide a bit more detail and storytelling to this piece. And I'm going to go back to my hard round brush tip here in just a second. I don't really like the middle of that, so I'm going to erase that from this image. And then I think I'm going to load in just one more copy of this. And we're going to put that at the bottom of that right side there. So somewhere right around here, and we can even flip this horizontally. So just to get a bit of variety. Okay, um, I think right around here, that'll do just fine. Let's go back to our blend if, remove some of that highlight so we can get rid of that fringe from top. And now we're just gonna continue to build up our environment once more, add some ferns to the foreground here, make things a bit interesting. And we can even make a copy of this by pressing Command J. We can nudge this one off to the left a little bit. And with all of these elements that we're adding, you know, they, they serve a couple of purposes. They help us with the storytelling and providing detail, but they also give us some depth of field, which is definitely a valuable aspect to have in your pictures. And lastly, I thought it'd be nice just to add another tree to the background here. And we're going to place this off in the right side, scale this down quite a bit. All right, so our layout is pretty much complete. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a few pterodactyl up in the sky and then just make some minor adjustments. But I'm just going to go ahead and skip over that just so you can see what the outcome of that looks like to save a little bit of time for us. All right, and here we are. Before we actually move on to doing any color grading or lighting, I'm just going to add a few more features to the Jeep. So I'm bringing in a license plate as well as a logo that we're going to add on. 
So I've isolated this layer by itself. I'm going to use a quick selection tool so we can just pretty much get the logo of this. I want to make sure all of this is selected except for that black background. And then we're going to load in a layer mask so that way we have it by itself. Okay, we'll Alt or Option click on that layer again. And now we can bring in our license plate. And this is going to just replace what we have from the original license plate of our picture here. So again, it's just that extra bit of detail to help fit with our environment and the story that we're telling. So I'm just command clicking on these corners here to help us with the perspective, make sure that it matches with our original license plate. And this should just about do it. Uh, we can go ahead and hit that check mark. Let's turn up our opacity. And we're going to repeat these same steps with the logo this time. So we're going to scale this down, lower the opacity, and again, just control or command click on these corners so that way we can match the perspective and really give a realistic impression that the logo is placed correctly on the Jeep. Okay, let's turn up the opacity. And obviously, it just it looks kind of fake right now. So we're going to adjust that. Something that's going to help us out is blend if. Let's bring in the darkest points from the layer beneath, which is the, the little crease of the Jeep, as well as we're going to bring in some of the highlights as well. This is going to blend these two images together and make it look a bit more realistic. OK, we are at the point where we can start working on lighting. So we're going to start with the sky. I always do that first. We're going to add a levels adjustment layer, clip that to the sky, bring in the highlights as well as some of that shadow. Next, we can add an exposure adjustment layer, add that on top. We're going to darken this up a little bit, but we're going to paint black on that layer mask just on the bottom so we can bring some of that highlight back in a bit. OK, that's looking good. We're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, play around with these sliders a little bit. just. You know, I'm kind of going for a cyan greenish tone. And even adding a solid color adjustment layer might do the trick as well. So let's find something around here. We can play around with the blend modes. And erase some of that bottom part because I want to keep that bright. We can even tweak up that color a little bit. And, you know, at this point, there's not really a right or wrong way of execution. This is just kind of how I do some of these steps to help create the mood that I'm going for. And now at this point, I'm back on my exposure adjustment layer, bringing back some of that highlight by the moon because obviously that's going to shed off some light. So we want to make sure that that is set up for us correctly. And now using a selective color adjustment layer, again, this is going to just tweak those colors just a bit more to give off the look that I want. OK, so now that our sky is set, we can move to other objects in this picture here. So let's move to the Jeep first. We're going to do the same thing by adding a levels adjustment layer, create a bit of contrast with this. And then from here, we can move on to color grading. So I'm using the color balance adjustment layer to bring in some color. If you watch the very first Jurassic Park movie, you'll remember that the Jeeps were a bright yellow color. So that's kind of my inspiration and motivation for this. So for our Jeep here, we're sticking to some of those warmer tones, bringing in the yellows, maybe a little bit of the magenta and reds as well. So we're going to do that through our highlights, midtones and shadows. And then we're going to go on the layer mask, erasing some of the spots that we don't want it on, like these tires, a little bit of the top here by the windshield. And then we can move to the front of the Jeep, erasing some of those unwanted parts and preserve that original color. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to darken this up a bit more because it's not quite at that level I want. So we're going to a levels adjustment layer, pulling in those highlights, erasing some of this top part because that's going to be hit by the moonlight, as well as we want to get rid of some of the spot by the headlights because that's going to be lit up and we don't want that to be dark. And we're just moving to all different areas of the Jeep, bringing back some of that color so it's not so dark and that way you're actually losing the integrity of the picture itself. So we want to preserve that detail. And even right here by the seats, we want to bring some of that light back. Cool. So that looks good. We're going back to a color balance adjustment layer, adjusting this a little bit more. I know my original intention was to make the Jeep yellow, but you know what? I kind of like where we're headed and I'm just going with it. At this point, we can navigate to the license plate and the logo. 
And let's darken that up with an exposure adjustment layer. Let's decrease that. And then we need to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top and desaturate that so it's not sticking out so much. Okay, at this point, I went ahead and turned off all of our dinosaur layers because I want us to focus on just the cliffs in the background. Let's darken that up first with an exposure adjustment layer. We'll clip it to our cliffs. We'll darken that up quite a bit. And then we are gonna go into our layer mask, paint black on some of those areas on the top, so that way we can bring back some of that moonlight. We have to go back to our blend if though and push these sliders to the right because we are losing that detail of our left cliff. It's just disappearing. So now that that's back, uh, we can focus back on some of that moonlight again on the top of these cliffs. Okay, and with our lighting in place, let's add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna desaturate this a little bit because on top of this, we're gonna add a color balance adjustment layer, introduce some of those cyans, blues, and maybe a little bit of that green. That way it helps match the tone of our sky. And then we're gonna blur it just a bit because it is in our background and it doesn't have to be so sharp. So I'm taking my time with each of these images, going up to filter, down to blur, using Gaussian blur, and just somewhere right around the 0.5 pixels should do the trick for us. All right, that looks good. I've added a new layer on top. I'm using the eyedropper tool to select some of these colors here. And we're gonna introduce some of that atmospheric pressure and haze. And that way it looks so much better with that in place. And just as a personal preference, I'm painting black just on the bottom center part here. So that looks pretty good. All right, so essentially what we wanna do now is just continue working our way towards the foreground. So the next thing that we're gonna to touch up on are these trees and I've added this exposure adjustment layer so we can repeat the same process. We wanna darken up these trees first, get them to a nice lighting level. And now we can add that, uh, sorry, hue and saturation adjustment layer to desaturate this, throw on a color balance layer on top of that, introduce some of those uh, similar tones that we have going on in our background. All right, so this is starting to blend really well. We can even lower the opacity on that just a touch. And so, yeah, that's essentially my workflow of how I blend all of this together. I'm gonna speed through this next section since you've already seen it a few times. I'll be back with you in just a moment. And I'm back. It's starting to look pretty good, but now I wanna turn our attention to the moon. I wanna turn that into a smart object first, then add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, put that into colorize, put some blue into this moon, but I wanna desaturate it so it's not so overbearing. And then we can add a layer on top of that. And then what we wanna do is with a white color, just add a couple of dabs on top, not too much so we lose all of that definition of the dark spots. But then we can add another layer beneath the moon, Add a few more dabs so that way we can have some of that glow. And then we can go closer into this on 100% opacity, just working around the edges here. And again, just making that glow even more intense. So we're just slowly building up this glowing effect. We can add a new layer on top, clip it to the moon. And then same thing with 100% opacity just outside of the edge because we just want the edge to be pretty luminous. And since these dark spots are still a little bit too dark for my liking, I'm just going to go over a little bit more and slowly making those even brighter. So this is looking pretty good. And I think that's going to do it for the moon. Um, what I want to do now is finish up the foreground, but because we're repeating the same steps over and over again, I'm not going to show that. So let's just jump over to the finished product of that. And here we are with that. Before we actually start doing any work on the dinosaurs, I wanna add some shadows um, to the fern here and on the ground. So I've gone on to the grass, add an exposure adjustment layer, and we're lowering this, inverting the mask by pressing Command I, and then painting some of that shadow back in. This way it's not gonna look like that fern is just kind of floating there, looks a bit more realistic and have that attachment to the ground itself. And we're gonna do the same thing with the dirt. So let's add an exposure adjustment layer. Darken that up, not too much though, so let's bring some of that back. And then we've inverted that, and now we're gonna paint some shadow underneath the Jeep. And if you wanna condense that brush tip like I have, all you have to do is click on your brush icon at the top, 
go to the brush tip and close in some of those anchor points and that's gonna flatten that brush tip. All right, so we're just moving on, continuing to take my time with this, building up that shadow underneath the Jeep. And now that we have that in place, I'm actually gonna move to the ferns in the foreground. We're gonna go to filter, down to blur, add some Gaussian blur. Because it's right in our foreground, I wanna make this blurry because it's not our main focal point. So somewhere right around these two pixels should be okay. Let's apply the same effect for our other fern that's right here in the foreground. I know a lot of people sometimes like to make it really blurry and that's okay. It's just not necessarily my personal preference. Um, so just a couple of pixels will do it just for me. And just before we move on to our first dinosaur, I'm gonna go back to the moon here, add a bit more glow to this, just so that it can pop just a bit more. All right, so I think that's a nice addition there. You can see the before and after of that. Yeah, we're on the right path here. Okay, now with our first dinosaur, let's add that exposure adjustment layer, clip it to our dino, and let's lower those lighting levels on this. Okay, and we've inverted that mask by pressing Command I, erasing some of that shadow on his back because that is gonna have that light from the moon reflected off of his backside there, as well as some parts behind his legs. So we wanna make sure that all of those areas are being touched on. Cool, so now we've added a hue and saturation adjustment layer, desaturated that a bit, so that way we can add the color balance on top, bringing in some of those same matching tones of the cyan, the blue, and a little bit of that green. So you'll see here, it just gets really repetitive and it just starts to become muscle memory. So I've actually went back to my exposure adjustment layer and I'm working a little bit more on this, continuing to touch up some areas on here. And now that we have this looking pretty good, um, what next I want to accomplish is I want to create some shadows underneath his feet. So it doesn't look like he's, again, he's just floating on top of the Jeep. So we've gone back to the Jeep layer, add an exposure adjustment layer to that once more. We're darkening this up quite a bit. And then pressing Command I, we're going to invert that mask paint some of that shadow in just beneath his feet so that way we have that connection. And because it looks kind of funny of how he's standing on top of that, I'm gonna go to edit and down to my puppet warp tool. Um, we're just gonna adjust this ever so slightly. So let's put some pins in all over the place. Um, that way the body doesn't move too much when I make any adjustments. And we're just gonna move this foot right there. That's all we needed to do, nothing too much. And now we can keep pressing on. Let's go ahead and erase some of the shadow in between the dinosaur's legs so that way we have the moonlight continuing to reflect off the top of that Jeep. But what we can actually do now is we can bring back some of the shadow on this backside of the Jeep because it's not being directly in contact with any of that moonlight. So we can darken this up just a little bit. I don't want it so dark that everything is just blended in and we're losing the definition. But dinosaur one is now complete. Let's bring in our second dinosaur. I'm gonna fast forward through this again, just like I did before, since we're repeating the same steps. All right, our second dinosaur is getting a little lost in the background, but no worries, we will take care of that in just a moment. I wanna add some highlights to the Jeep, so we're gonna go back to an exposure adjustment layer, but this time we're gonna increase the lighting on this. Okay, so let's do that, invert the mask, and now we're just gonna go around to all different parts of this Jeep, add some of that light being reflected off of this. Um, that's especially coming from the moonlight. That's our main light source here. So we're just working our way all around the Jeep here, hitting all those different parts, mainly sticking to just the edge of the Jeep in those parts. And then ultimately what we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply that same technique to our dinosaurs. However, since we've seen this on the Jeep, we're gonna speed through this section and yeah, be back in just a moment. So I'm just finishing up with this dinosaur here in the background. And what I wanna do now is add those same effects to our pterodactyls that are in the sky. However, I don't wanna keep beating you over the heads with the same information over and over again. So let's just jump right over to that and see that final product. All right, so here we are with those changes. 
And now kind of like what we did earlier on with those cliffs in the background, adding that atmospheric pressure in the haze, we're going to do the same thing to the pterodactyl here. So I've added a new layer on top, clipped it to the dinosaurs flying above, and with a sample color from our sky, we just want to lightly paint over some of these in the background, maybe change up the color a little bit. And so that way it's just going to give us the impression that they are further into the background, again, giving us more of that depth of field. And we can even touch up some of the tops of the cliffs once more. So we can do a little bit on this side, do a little bit on the left as well. All right, we can even go back to the exposure adjustment layer on the cliffs, and we can add a more intense highlight to the tops of these. really emphasize all of that light being reflected from the moonlight. This is also going to help give us a little bit of separation between the cliffs and the sky in that background. Okay, cool. I think it is now time we can bring in some lights for the Jeep and that way we can turn on the headlights. I have a couple of stock images here that we're going to use. So let's make a copy of that. We can turn it on. I first want to add a levels adjustment layer because I want to make the light even brighter. So I'm going to increase the headlights. And then we want to put this into a screen blend mode so that way we can get rid of that black background. Command T to transform this. Let's rotate this around here. We're going to start with the backlight first. And let's just kind of position it. You can either control or command click on these anchors so that way we can get the right um, distortion of this and the perspective so that everything fits nice and seamless and actually just looks correct with the angle of the light in relationship to the Jeep itself. So with that in place, we just want to go ahead and touch up around the edges here, clean that up. And once we have that set, we want to highlight both the levels and the light, convert it to a smart object, and then we'll go back to the screen and then make a copy of that by pressing Command J. And this one will just slide over to the right side. All right, so now we have headlights. Um, we can adjust this just a little bit here, but what I want to do now is I want to give it a bit of a tint of color. So we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, put it in a colorize, and let's just kind of find something that looks nice. So we'll kind of go to the yellow first, maybe desaturate that a little bit. So that looks okay. Let's try the blue. I think this all actually look pretty nice because it does complement our sky pretty well. So I might leave it right here. So with that taken care of, we just got to apply that same thing to our other headlight and we can just fast forward to that. And what we can actually do now, we can take it one step further and I have this lens flare brush where we can just apply an extra little pop just right there on the, the headlight itself. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm actually going to go back to my soft round brush and clean this up a bit more because I still see a bit of a harsh edge. So I just want to touch that up. Okay, so now that we actually have those headlights in place, uh, we want to add some light to the ground. So I've added an exposure adjustment layer. We're going to crank this up a little bit. Let's invert that mask by pressing Command I. And then using a soft round brush, let's condense this brush tip a little bit. And you know what? Let's go back and condense it a little bit more. Okay, and now we can start painting white on this layer mask. Bring some of that light back in so we have that reflection bouncing off of the ground. And this is also going to help so that way it doesn't look so dark there at the bottom of our image. And we can go back to our original exposure adjustment layer on the ground and do the same thing there. And there we go. All right, so we are pretty much at the very end of this composition here. Um, we only have a couple of other elements to add to this. We want to add a little bit of mist in that background a little bit. Again, give it some more character. I want to go back to our Jeep, add a little bit of grunge and dirt onto that to, again, give it some more texture as well as do some work on the windshield because right now it just looks completely empty. All right, so let's start with that fog in the background. I've got a cloud brush here. I've already sampled the color from the sky and we're just doing a couple of dabs here just in that background. Um, again, just to kind of help set the tone and the mood of this picture here. So not too much, that'll be just fine. We can now use our pen tool on the windshield and we're just gonna create a selection just to right around here where the glass would normally be. All right, so we're just going to take our time, go through this. And now that we have this connected, we'll right click, uh, create a selection. 
And then what we want to do is go to our brush tool and we can go back to our soft round brush. All right, there we go. And we're going to, at a low opacity, just go around the edges here. And you can see just by doing this, it's going to help create the illusion that now all of a sudden there is glass that's actually present there. And we actually have a windshield now. So we can deselect that. We can load in our very first broken glass image. This is going to help add that extra layer of detail to this. And let's scale this down. And we want to distort this so it fits with the perspective of the windshield. And you can do that by clicking and holding down the command or control keys on the corners. All right, so I'll just put this off to the side and we're just experimenting here. So I've loaded in another one to see how this one looks and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to put this on the right side here and we want to match the perspective. But as we're doing this, I'm thinking I like the other one a little bit better uh, than this one, but we'll still go ahead and match the perspective first. Um, but let's move that off to the other side, load back in that first one to have on the right side. I think this is going to look good. Okay, we are now at the final step before we go to that camera raw filter. And what I'm doing now is I'm loading up one of my grunge brushes. And we're going to use this just to provide that extra little bit of detail, add some dirt and texture onto the Jeep itself. And we're not going to go overboard with this, just a couple of dabs here just to help us out. And that should be it. Uh, you don't need to do anything extra than that. So with that done, you know what time it is. It is camera raw filter time. Oh, yeah. So with the new layer selected at the very top, go ahead and press Command Shift Option E. That is going to load all of these images together, flatten them into one layer at the top. Make sure it's a smart object first. Then you want to go to the top to filter all the way down to camera raw filter. And let's do our final touch ups in here. So here we are with that final image. All of our hard work has paid off. And you can see I did do a couple of extra little touch ups there, mainly just adding some drool from that dinosaur in the background, which honestly was just a little bit of a scribbling action with the brush tool. So very easy to do. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well as give it a like. I really appreciate all the support that you give to this channel. So with all of that said, I really hope to see you again for our next video. Until that time, please be safe and take care, everybody.